Hey Sainers, sorry I don't know what happened there. I think it cut out, but welcome, it's Thursday night. We know what that means, it means it's team selection night. Uh, obviously we have the game on Sunday, so as expected we've gone with an extended squad um, so far, so no outs. Uh, that'll come at 5pm tomorrow and that's when uh, we'll know exactly who's coming out of the team. Right now there are four ins, one particularly big in being Jack Steven, which we all knew he was going to play this week. Um, the others are Ben Long, who's been on the cast, Ben Patton, and Darren Joyce. So um, there's three youngsters there that have shown bits and pieces along the way. Um, I'm a bit surprised Nick Hind wasn't part of that. I mean, St Kilda kind of teased it with their Instagram post, and it was a post of Nick Hind saying, "Oh, who's you know, stay tuned for selection," and he's not even in in the extended uh, squad, which I think. You know, he, he looked good in preseason. He's been doing okay for Sandy. And under the roof at Marvel against the Hawks, I feel like his kicking ability would be really beneficial for us. Um, the same goes for Robbie Young, who's been doing well at Sandy, but again, not even close to being selected here. So there must be, there must be some parts that, to their games that we're not seeing that need to be improved by the coaches. Um, but so far, it's Jack Steven, Ben Long, Ben Patton, Darren Joyce, which, you know... It is what it is. I'm just happy to see Jack Steven in. In terms of the outs for the extended squad, I thought, you know, I posted during the week, you know, if Dean Kent was on the um, <clears throat> on the chopping block. He um, didn't kick a goal on the weekend and he didn't, um, he didn't lay a single tackle. And a lot of people thought, you know, maybe that's warranted that he gets dropped, but also, you know, one bad game doesn't really mean that he should be dropped. Uh, but for Jack Steven... I feel like the rest of the guys probably won't make it, but if I had to pick, you know, Jack Stephen would come in, Hunter Clark, although, you know, he only played, uh, it was his first game of the season against Frio, and everyone's kind of been very critical of him, and I feel like we need to give him an extended run. Uh, but perhaps it, it is a Dean Kent, and Jack Stephen comes in who can rest forward, gives Gresh the ability to go back into the midfield with Billings, but they can also rotate through the middle and as that forward, uh, that pressure forward because I feel like Jack Steven can play that role. He's fast, he loves to tackle, and he's, he's got a decent eye for goal. Um, it just kind of makes sense that that's the swap. I wouldn't, I wouldn't drop Hunter Clark. I don't know what you guys think, but um, Hunter Clark was a bit iffy last week, but you wouldn't drop him. I feel like a guy like Luke Dunstan needs... Let's give him the first month. Let's give him, you know, four or five weeks, you know, where he can get some consistency... I thought he did well last week. I don't necessarily think he was one of the worst in the midfield. He laid, you know, I think five tackles for the game, had about 15, 16 possessions, which again, all of you are going to say, isn't enough for a midfielder playing in that role for a good two hours, you know, every week. Uh, but if he's laying tackles like other guys aren't, then you kind of want to keep him in because right now we are ranked as the number one tackling team in the comp. That's, that's the stat I've got right here. And that's a really good thing to have. Last year, it was a big drop-off for us. And that's how, you know, no doubt that coincided with our drop-off in wins. And this season, we've been competitive in every single game we've played, including pre-season. So that goes for five games where we've been, you know, we've won four of them um, pretty convincingly. And we're very close to pinching it away from home last week. So overall, like, I'm going into this game with, with some serious confidence. I think we're um, underdogs. I'm amazed that the AFL website's even tipped us. I think um, I've got the match preview here of them. And they're saying tip is St Kilda by 14 points. So they didn't tip us against Frio. They didn't tip us against Essendon. I don't think they even tipped us against the Gold Coast. And they're tipping us against Hawthorne, who are probably one of the better teams out of that lot, um, which is interesting. But then again, if we look at Hawthorne, they've started the season pretty slowly. Uh, they really had to fight for it last week. They started slow against North Melbourne. Um, and we know what happened against the Bulldogs where they were five goals up and they conceded the last nine goals of the game uh, and lost it out of nowhere, out of thin air, literally in the last quarter. 30 points up and you lose. You know, No one wants to be in that position, but they did that. Um, and in round one, they had a very good win uh, away from home against Adelaide. So they've, they've been a bit up and down. I think we've been more, almost more consistent than them. They've just had you know more impressive win against Adelaide away from home, although... Adelaide haven't looked that amazing this season and then they've you know, lost to a Bulldogs team that's going to be up and down throughout the season, maybe similar to us. 
and then last week they started slow against a very bad team who I'm tipping to be bottom two in North Melbourne. I don't think they're that good. I think Ben Brown is going to struggle this season with the new rules. Um, and, you know, they're going to rely on someone like Higgins and they're not going to be that good. But in terms of us, I've got some interesting stats here from Footy Wire. They kind of rank the teams or what they're good at, what they're not good at. And I just wanted to go through that. I feel like it's, it's good to cover these things in terms of what our strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and currently our high rankings are ranked first in the AFL for tackles. Second one's not very good. We're ranked fifth for clangers. So we're making a lot of mistakes. We need to fix that up. We saw a lot of them last week that cost us dearly. We're ranked fifth in least opponent points per game. That's not bad. And we're ranked third in team to opponent tackles per game differential. So those are our key strengths. In terms of low rankings, there's way more of them, which is surprising. Uh, but if you look at it, we're ranked 14th for kicks. Those ones are, you know, they're not that important. We're ranked 13th for hit outs. Um, to be honest, a lot of them are clangers here. Um, 12th for rebound 50s per game, 14th for marks per game. We're not marking a lot, but that's perhaps a lot. A lot of these could be game plan uh, focused and not necessarily us being poor. You know, 13th for hit outs. We don't have the most dominant ruck duo or at all. It's just kind of 23-year-old Rowan Marshall. 12th for disposals, which is fine. You don't need to have 100 disposals to be a good team. Um, 12th for points per game. So we're not the highest scoring team, but if we're 5th for least opponent per game our defense is doing well i think that's the key thing and that's what uh, a lot of people have noticed you know in attack we we seem to struggle and we still bomb it to bruce and membry and we need to get them more on the lead we need to open up the 50 a bit more uh, but in terms of when teams get the ball off us they're not going down the other end fast and scoring which was the case last season and even when we were doing okay in 2017 2015 um they're not hurting us as much when we're playing poor. So I think, you know, last week we weren't that good for a portion of the game, but when we turned it on, we got back into the game and we steadied. Against Gold Coast, we weren't that good for the entire game and we won. Against Essendon, we were good in patches, but, you know, obviously a lot of that game we were clum as clumsy as Essendon anyway, but it didn't hurt us on the scoreboard. And that's a good thing to start getting into our game is that we don't have to be at the top of our game to be in the game. So if we're in it long enough against Hawthorne, if we obviously I think last week we we started slow and that cost us in the end. So I think that's going to be and that is something that a lot of the players in interviews this week have talked about is that they want to come out and they want to attack Hawthorne because I don't think it. I think Hawthorne like the game when it's slow and they can chip it around and they can take their uncontested marks and it's it should, the game's on their terms and that's been the case for Hawthorne in the last ten years ever since Clarko really nailed that down from. 2008 and they went and just won all those premierships that's been their game style that's Hawthorne for us we're uncon you know we, we want to be fast we want to fumble them we want to put them under pressure we don't want them to kick the ball and I think the more we can force them into that rushed handball the more you know we can turn the ball over use our tackling and really hurt them on the break they ob they've obviously got you know the likes of Tom Scully Tom Mitchell's out um, Chad Wingard had a good game on debut um, so they've got some star power there, but I think on the other side, we work harder. I think we tackle harder, we work harder, we run in numbers more. And I think at Marvel, where we've, you know, we've been so good in the first two games, we can go in confidence. You know, I have no reason why we can't win this game. I'm amazed we're actually not favourites. To be honest, I'm amazed we're not favourites. I think maybe that it's just the fact that we've generally been poor against Hawthorne, although last time we played them we did only lose by under a goal. Um, We'll leave it there. Um, you know, but previous games don't matter. We've seen that with this season. It's up and down. I think we just need to go into this game. You know, obviously respect Hawthorne. They're a good team when they're on. But at the same time, this is the perfect game where we can really build for the season. And going to the game against Melbourne as three, three wins and one loss would be amazing. And I think Sunday, Marvel, home ground, you know, really no excuses again. And I think, if anything, we've almost gotten more compliments from the media this week from our result in Perth last week where we didn't win compared to winning the first two games which is ridiculous but I think even from a lot of neutrals that I talked to they thought that Fremantle played pretty well for the most part of the game and they almost didn't win that's how good we were and we weren't good for you know half that game so if we can go into this game start well which is the key because we've started slow in 
you know, maybe three of the games we've played apart from the Essendon one, um, then we're going to be in it. And that's really important. Come out, guns blazing, lower the eyes a little bit, and just tackle the shit out of Hawthorne, and we're in this game. You know, they don't have those... They haven't really done anything in their first three weeks where I've been like, shit, I'm terrified of playing them. They've been as good as us at times, and worse. We've been the more consistent of the two teams. So we really need to put that down... Um, on Sunday. I'll go through some of these comments guys. Let me just scroll back to the top because there's a few here. Um, let's go this, I think the squad looks good. That's what Stuart says. Uh, Michael says hi. Um, Glenn says Dunstan looked on point last week. I thought, I thought he was better. I think Dunstan responded. I think he did enough and you know, people forget the week before, it was against Gold Coast when the game was on the line and we won. He put his body on the line, almost did his shoulder, and it basically won us the game. Because if he hadn't have done what he did, Gold Coast would have turned the ball over, gone up the other end, other, other end either kicked a point and drawn the game, or kicked a goal and won the game. So, he's a team player. I know we criticise him, he doesn't get enough of the ball, but he does some nice things that we don't notice. You know, his pressure acts. He gets a quick handball out. He taps the ball on. He shepherds. He creates space for his teammates. Um, and right now, we're not playing poorly. So why change the team too much? Let's not look too much at the individual. And let's look at the team. And right now, would you change much of this team? I wouldn't. Um, Taylor says, I'd only replace Kent for Steven. If you look at the team, Kent isn't isn't starting and no one else really deserves to be dropped. Clark and Akers are the only dangers to get dropped, but it would be harsh to do that. I think so. They haven't had a run this season. Akers has only played the two games and Hunter Clark has only played the one last week in Perth in tough conditions. So you've got to give them a consistent run here. You can't just bring them in and go, oh, you've been shit, drop them. That's not the point. You've got to give them games. That's how they get better. And then you know you drop them after one game, then you bring them back, they don't they don't perform, and then you drop them again. So it's unfair. You need to give them a run, um, even if it affects the output of the team. But I feel like Hunter Clark can do some good things. He'll be better for the long run, and I think Blake Akers is the same. Um, Stephen in and Kent or Dunstan out is what Grant thinks. Stephen and Pan in for Dunstan and Clark from that squad. Hind and Young should be in. I think Hind and Young are super exciting. And it should be very soon when we see them. And imagine the pace that we'll have around the ground with those two guys in there, both lightning quick. So it's going to give us a different dynamic when, you know, when we bring them in. Aviva says, Dunstan out. Um, Sharon said, need someone to get the ball out of the middle. Dunstan's a big body. And that's one thing I don't think, you know, Jack Stephen has over him. Jack Stephen can go forward more, but I think Dunstan has that clearance body that's really important to have, especially against Hawthorne, who have a very good engine room. If we are to be in this game, it's going to be very important that we win a lot of the clearances, more than we did against Fremantle. Um, Glenn says, Clark is a gun. I don't agree with him being out. Pete says, Chuck Geary on the wing. Geary's an elite runner, and I thought Geary played, to be fair, I didn't credit him, I don't think, in my review last week, but he had an amazing game last weekend. I thought he was excellent. I thought he took a lot of intercept marks. He played within himself. He didn't do too much like he's been guilty of doing at times. He just did what he had to do and nothing amazing. And it was one of his best games, cleanest games I've seen him play in you know, three or four years. So good on him and I hope he continues it in this game. Uh, Marcus says we need to shut down Wingard in particular. He's their power forward. I agree. Uh, they, I didn't see if Roughhead has been um, announced in the team, but they said that he was likely to come back in. So if anyone has mentioned whether he's in or not, that would be good, because I didn't really notice it. Um, but, you know, if he's not playing, even better. Who plays on wing guard? I think it'll be a mixture of Geary, Jimmy Webster. They're the mobile guys. I don't think, maybe McKenzie, but I don't think Savage, Wilkie, Battle, or Brown are those sort of players. I think it's got to be either Jimmy Webster or, um, or Ge Geary. Um, if we hit the ball out, uh, to our teammates from the bounces and center square and if the midfield is explosive we could have a chance I think we have a chance regardless um, Grant says need to fix clearances we were smashed last week um, Ross says I'm not liking Geary getting a heap of touches his best games have been shutting down players and only getting 12 to 15 touches needs Savage to get more use out of defense um, Andrew says I wonder if Ratten can help bring down the Hawks it's going to be very interesting I forgot about that, but yeah, obviously Brett Ratton having a big history with Hawthorne, he knows how Clarko thinks. 
And obviously Clarko knows that Rats is over here, so there's going to be a bit of an interesting battle of tactics. Uh, but I think it's very, no doubt it will be beneficial having Brett Ratton um, tell us about individual players and, you know, what Gunston does, what Bruce does, you know, what these sort of guys do and how we can best take them down. Um, Glenn says we definitely need a strong midfield squad a la Clark, Dunstan, Long, Stephen. Um, Rahul says better to be underdogs. They don't play poorly when they're favourites for some reason. Um, Jason says when does Hanabry and Carlisle become available? Carlisle, I wouldn't tip on it for another couple of months. Hanabry, Hanabry, it's pretty much a big unknown on that part. It's just, he needs to, I don't even really know if he's really been training fully with the team. Um, so I'd still tip him to be, you know, another month or two away. Leone says, I hate the Hawks, go Saints. Uh, Dean says, love to see battle go forward. Depends on how we go in the game, but I thought maybe last week in the last minute or two we'd throw him forward just to get an extra body, but he never did it. Um, but I I've liked him down back. I think he's been really, really decent for us, and I think with Gunston, Bruce, and maybe Roughhead, uh, Ruffy's in, as um, Gary said, thank you for that. Um, you're going to need Josh Battle in defence. There's too much... Uh, power in that Hawthorne forward line that we need to respect and if we take battle out it just throws our whole defense out of whack um, Shane says what's our record against the Hawks not good I think interesting you mentioned that I thought I had it here recent we've been decent recent uh, in recent times we smashed them in Tassie we only lost by four points um, last season we had that draw years ago, so it's not been it's not been it's not been terrible, but it's not been great. I think it, you know, it'd be a 40-60 sort of balance. They'd win six of the you know of the ten if we played them uh, in recent times. But I think this is one you know the best time to get them early in the season. They've not been be they've not been great. We've been decent, um, and we're playing in our home deck. And I think we play Marvel much better than a lot of teams. Um, so I'm going into this game with a lot of confidence. I'm going into this game expecting a win. I don't do that often, but I tipped us. I, I mean, I tip us most weeks, but th in this game, I would be genuinely surprised if we're not in the game in the last term or winning the game in the last term. So take of that what you will, but I'm really, I've got serious expectations on this game and I really want to be going into round five at three and one. What perfect way than to face Melbourne at three and one and hopefully batter them. And they're playing tonight, so we'll get a good look and see how they go, but. Um, you know, I think it's in our hands. If we take the game on and we play similarly to last week and we just get it on the scoreboard, which is what really hurt us last week, we didn't kick the goals when we needed to, um, then, you know, if we just stick to what we've been doing and just get that end product right where we get the goals, Hawthorne, I think, will be in serious trouble. So I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll be going to the game. So if you see me there, you know, say hi. It'd be great to meet anyone who's part of the Saints TV crew. Um, I'm really excited about this game. I'm really expecting a lot from the team, which I know can be a bad thing when you've got high expectations and it doesn't turn out that way, which happens a lot, um, and, and you get left, get left disappointed. But I, I really like the way we're going about things. I think Rowan Marshall against Ben McAvoy is going to be critical, uh, but I think it's a really good challenge, and Marshall was amazing last week, and really every game he's played has been super impressive. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited to see how these guys go and to take on the game against a, a decent Hawthorne team who, remember, a year ago finished f top four. So um, it's going to be a good challenge, but I think the guys are up for it and I think they're ready for it. So I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll see you guys at the end of the game on Sunday, hopefully talking about a win. Catch you guys.